Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and this is Mayumi Yoshida, filmmaker, actor, crown princess on The Man in the High Castle, and I'm hanging out with Galaxy on Comic-Con Radio. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Galaxy signing in for Comic-Con Radio. Coverage of pop culture events from around the globe. Amazing interviews with celebrities. Daily recaps and reviews of popular television. Movie reviews. Everything Comic-Con and fandom from around the globe. Comic-Con Radio. Get ready to enter our universe. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Galaxy on an amazing Friday episode of Comic-Con Radio. Today, we have a really cool guest in the studio. She does voice acting. She works in cartoons, movies, TV, all sorts of things. Today, I welcome Mayumi Yoshida on Comic-Con Radio. Mayumi, how are you? Welcome to Comic-Con Radio. I'm great. Thanks for having me on this beautiful Friday. Well, thank you for coming on the show. (laughs) Um, Today's going to be fun Hopefully take this interview On a nice cool little trippy ride And go over everything that is Mayumi Yes I'm excited. Slightly frightened, but excited. <laughs> Don't be frightened. <laughs> I'm a nice boy. Don't worry. <laughs> so the first series that you did, how is it working out? Do you like it? Do you love it? Oh my gosh. It was so much fun. The story itself, it's adorable. It's a Netflix animation series. And it, it revolves around this Japanese-American family, which obviously is like for me, representation is such a huge thing. So I'm really happy that the creators really seeked out people from that community, which me and some other actors too, who are involved in the series are Jeff from Japanese descent. It's about ninjas. So like, how cute is that? It's awesome. And it's ever since it got released, uh, I've been seeing like videos of little kids watching and doing their own ninja moves. And I'm so happy to be involved in this. That's pretty cool. Yeah. This is your first major cartoon series that you're on. There was a TV series called A Terror that yes. we had Derek Mayo on. Yes, it was. And my friend Lee Shorten was on that too. Yes, Lee's lovely gentleman. We've had him on. He was actually my attorney. Then I told him, listen, <laughs> you cannot be my attorney anymore. You need to go become an actor. And he listened to me. So I, that's the best advice I gave him in his life. Hilarious. <laughs> he owes everything to you. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I could say he was my attorney, right? People will believe yeah. me. Yeah, that's it. We got to go like that. So the terror. Oh, was it like a cool yeah. experience for you? Because it was one of the first things of its type that kind of you know talked about something very important in history but then made it all supernatural yeah like even just walking into the table read seeing that 99 percent of the cast was japanese or asian i was like whoa this is insane like the director the showrunner that was such a monumental moment in my career for sure to see how many of us were there sitting and like people like us were the main storytellers like I haven't seen it happen in right in front of me so um the table we I I was actually kind of emotional feeling like wow I feel like this is like a moment this is a big moment and of course the story the reality the, what actually happened behind the story is such an important historical part that we need to keep telling And with like that horror twist, I thought it was really clever and it was an honor to be a part of it. You know, even seeing like George Takei in front of you and lots of great Japanese actors who came from Japan or Australia or Britain. They all just gathered to like tell the story. So that was really, really cool. You must feel so proud. You got to be part of something historical. The TV series was amazing. I love that show Mm because it was just fun. The whole story was amazing you know, from the beginning to the end. Uh, I wish that they can actually make a season two and three just about that stuff. But I know, (laughs) you know, you can't because it was like a historical thing and they got their point across and stuff like that. But there is a TV (laughs) show that you're on and you're a crown Mm -hmm. princess, which is the man in the high castle. Yes. Unfortunately, though, this is also our final season. I know. Um, (laughs) But you know what? We were very lucky in a sense to know that this was our final season when we were like creating this TV series because it's so much better than getting cut off midway and then you don't get to tell the full story. So I think the writers and the producers really kind of molded the story so that all the characters 
got to have find an ending and also like experience very new things that they've never had done before in the series. So honestly, I think it's one of those rare shows that the final season may be the best. I think it's the best. Wanting something to go on forever and it actually happening that way is two different things. So it is unfortunate that the show is ending this season, but it's ending on a high note. Amazing TV series, amazing actors. We can go on and on. Amazon comes out with some amazing stuff. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. I think one of their very first big TV series that they did on Amazon Prime, it was still like when the first season came out, it was still very new. Like the whole streaming service was still very new. So the show was kind of like the pioneer. So it's really been an honor to be involved in And of course, like you mentioned, like the cast and the crew involved, like the production design on this and, you know, the budget is huge. And also just the talent on this show was off the charts. I feel so spoiled being going from there and then to the terror. And like, yeah, I feel like I just was able to experience the best set ever. And (laughs) I really love when someone's like loving what they do. They're making it. It's happening for them. You know, I wanted to go over two things with you. You're getting all these like awards and accolades for your directorial debut, for your acting debut, emerging actor. You're getting a lot of awards these days. I know you got something for (laughs) Tokyo Lovers, and I know you got something for Mm -hmm. Akashi, which was your directorial debut. It must feel great. Yeah, I mean, at times it's kind of like, I definitely have, like a lot of people do, like imposter syndrome. So I feel like, oh my God, people are going to find out that I'm actually not that great. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Every time there's like these accolades, I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel like this is wrong. But at the same time, I really appreciate that people who are a little bit younger than me would kind of tell me that like, oh, I saw that show and it inspired me or like, oh, I saw you win this thing and it inspired me. And like, that's what I saw in other people. So um, that makes me feel like, no, it's okay. Like, you know, accept it and Uh, be grateful and move on keep on doing the work because the awards are like wonderful but at the end of the day what gives me most joy is creating so um it's it's a it's a lovely thing that people look at it and sometimes they would give me the opportunity because of these awards but uh for me like being able to create is the best part and also being surrounded by so many amazing people i get to work with collaborating with my friends is just like pure joy to me so i feel very honored in many ways pretty nice that you feel that way you're still young you know some people like say these things when they're like (laughs) older and they're like oh thank you for something i did 30 years ago you just did something now and people are like saying wow their eyes are on you so akashi what is that about Mm -hmm. for fans that don't know So it's based on a true secret because my grandmother and I, like like seven years ago, we we were talking over lunch and she was telling me how like she's so proud of me that I'm pursuing my dream overseas because I'm originally from Japan. And then I was telling her that like, actually, when I moved here, one of my culture shocks was how people date here and how so many of my friends' parents were divorced and separated. And I so told my grandma that it's actually pretty astonishing that you fulfilled your marriage until grandpa died like you were together until he died so that that's actually very rare and I think that's more extraordinary and then she was like oh well you know grandpa had another lover our entire marriage life I was like what you're like what (laughs) excuse me (laughs) and then she's like yeah yeah so the story is kind of based around my character who's kind of based on true story where like my character was living abroad and sort of like navigating this like very modern dating scene and then like uncommittal and not so sure about what they want. And then by hearing her grandmother's experience and like this epic love story that happened between uh, the grandfather and the lover, she kind of learns more about herself and love. It's a short film that I got to make like two and a half years ago. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So that really happened? Like that's an actually truth? Your grandma just like sat you down and said, hey, by the way, you know, were you like shocked? <laughs> were you like, what 
the hell? I know you're speaking oh calm God. right now, Absolutely. but how did you feel that moment? I was, I, I was speechless. I just, first of all, like, why is she telling me this? And then I, I asked her, like, does anybody know about this? And then she said, no, just your great auntie. That's it. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So none of my family knows. I'm like, no. I'm like, oh my God, why are you telling me this? And she, she just felt like suddenly sharing this with me and um yeah it was out of nowhere it was a huge shock for me but naturally it's like it, it was a big impact so like it made me think about and I had just moved to Vancouver from Tokyo so I had that culture shock thinking like why is it that they were so committed back in the days when they did when they had very few choices in life and now that I have my generation I have plenty of choices to make. However, I can't quite commit to any of them, or at least I see my friends not being able to. And that was a very interesting contrast to me that uh, does more choices in life give you, make you more hesitant to actually stick to one. And then my grandmother would say, you know, it was that was the only choice that they had. So there was no other choice not to commit. That was like, you just decide that that is your life and that's it. And also the interesting thing is she thought I had it better. And I'm thinking like, wow, it must be so nice back in the days where like you would just commit and like, grass is always greener on the other side, you know. It gave you a short <laughs> film and you got an award. Something that happened in your personal life decades ago mm -hmm. affects you now in such a way where you created a story out of it, which is pretty great. You seem like this type of person mm -hmm. that has a lot to show, and I know there's so much more in you that you wanna bring out into the world. I feel that you act in your own projects because you can mm -hmm. tell it the best yourself. You think that's true? For Akashi, it kind of became, it kind of came from necessity. Um, because I couldn't find any Japanese writer or director or another Japanese actor. Then if I I'll were do it writing myself. Direct. So I just kind of <laughs> had to, you know, like it's I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll have to wear all the hats because no one, and I, I guess you're right. Maybe in that sense, I was the best person to do it, but, uh, that was just lack of, I guess, Japanese talent or like, it's, it's just like, we needed, we need more creators for uh, people who are emerging to think that, like, oh, I can do this too, you know? So, um, and that's what I felt, like, just this is just three years ago, and I felt like, oh, there's no one I can go to. And then now I see, like, so many people who yeah. look like me, who are so talented, and they're, like, uh, in TV series and movies. And, who would you um, have And picked? that's really the power... Who would you Sorry. have picked for mm -hmm. that role if you could have at that time? Who would you have picked if you got anybody to portray that? Oh, my gosh. Uh, Come on, say it. It's okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. I don't my. know, actually. For, for That's such a diplomatic answer. I really like it. <laughs> I wish I could. I wish I had a name. I really didn't. I really don't know. I still probably... Um, you know what though? Because I saw the farewell, like Aquafina is is so great. I love her. She's hilarious, and also like she did amazing in the farewell, and I cried. And <laughs> yeah, I think I think she's definitely someone who um, I'd love to work with in the future. Well, I hope she reaches out to you. <laughs> well, you know you have you have lots of things happening. You never know. You have another movie. It's a short. It's called Trim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I wrote, directed, produced, and um, acted a little bit in it. And it was part of this 48-hour film festival called Blood and Guts. By uh, it's hosted by this is a Spoon Studios, and uh, man, it was crazy. Do you, have you like have you ever made films in 48 hours? No, not me. I I've, I've made like home <laughs> videos in 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> It was insane. Like you, what you have to do is you get a theme and a line that you have to include in the short, and then an, a, a prop that must be used, and uh, you get that all the information at Friday night, six p.m. And then from then, from there on, like you write and then you shoot and then you edit. You do sound mixing. 
uh, if you if there are, you do VFX, like you do every coloring, everything, and then you hand it in Sunday night. So that was insanity. And uh, but it was really, really fun because um, it's just pure creative, just outburst. You just there's not a lot of time to think. <laughs> you just got to like blast it out and shoot it. And I got to work with the actors that I've always wanted to work with. Uh, Jimmy Yi, who won Best Performance in this award. And then uh, Sarah Rick Vickrock, who's like been my long-term friend. And Osric Chow, who's like killing it right now. Uh, he's, the, he's Adam in um, the new like DC TV universe. So that was, you know, it was just great to have people who I've always wanted to work with and just create a film in like 48 hours. Wow. And I've also never done horror. So that was also like really fun too. So it's challenging and you did pretty well. You know, it's, <laughs> uh, it's on your filmography now. So you get to put that on, I am, you know, uh, DB and now yeah. <laughs> you know people get to know you for that. So it's pretty cool. That's the cool thing about you. You could come out with all these short films and just make your filmography like 10 miles long and just keep coming out <laughs> with little cool stories and stuff like that. You know, I have a friend, her name is Madeline Kennedy. She's a filmmaker uh -huh. from Australia. Shout and, out. Yeah. yeah. And she created the first sci-fi TV series from Australia. It's called Whoa. We Were Tomorrow. Yeah, you should look her up and maybe connect. Okay. She's amazing. Uh, you know, I'm seeing a lot Mel of filming. juiced vibes from everywhere now with writing, directing, like five in one type of people coming out from everywhere. I think the talent's mm. amazing out there right now, but it's needed because there's so many cool things. The TV level bars is high. Look at the man in the high castle. It's feature film. Like it's insane how much and the talent like Rufus and Kayla and so many actors on that show. Funny thing about Rufus is like when I was a kid, 15, when I was in junior high in Japan, I hated like mathematics, I would do this thing where I would decorate my notebook. So the cover of my notebook, so I won't fall asleep. <laughs> uh, I would cover it. I would de decorate it with like my crushes at that time, my talent crushes. Oh, and when I was 15, so it was Rufus. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh -oh. Rufus on it because <laughs> I love Dark City and like he was on the cover of it. And then when I first got the audition with The Man in the High Castle, the pilot was out. So I watched the pilot and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, <laughs> it's Rufus. So I got super hyped about that. And I was like, okay, calm down. And then I worked on the audition and like the material was so rich. Like no one could ever play the crown princess of Japan in like anywhere. It's almost like a taboo to play a royal family. They are part of, you know, they're, they're the descendants of God. So you can't just casually play that kind of role. You, that kind of role will hardly ever come in your life. And that happened. And the story was extraordinary and the setting was scary, but um, very interesting. And, uh, and she was also kind of like an interesting character where um, she has this strength within her and intelligence. So, because um, usually, you know, Japanese female roles are like meek or like they have to be sexy or anything. She was, she wasn't about that. She was, she, she just had this, yeah, it's a very interesting character. So I got deeply uh, interested in that. And then I did the audition and somehow I got it, which is awesome. And I forgot until like the day before the table read that like, oh, right. Like, oh my gosh, I'm going to see him. And then I was talking with my friend at this cafe in Vancouver and I was talking about the series. I was like, yeah, I got this role. And then just as I was talking about that, that the, the show, who walks in? Rufus. He walks into the cafe and I'm like, whoa, oh my gosh. And then my friend's like, isn't that like, yeah, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she was like, you should go talk to him. I was like, oh, but why do you feel like, oh, no, I don't want to. No, it's okay. It's okay. So I was too shy. So I didn't say anything. And then the next day it was a table read and I got there. And, uh, you know, it's, I was really nervous because there's like a big table with all these names. And people start to trickle in. And then I sat in my spot. And then this big laughter burst out the door. And it's Rufus. And I was like, oh, my God. So I just kind of like, don't look at him. Don't look at him. And <laughs> I was looking straight at my desk. 
And then a hand comes in and then he, I look up and it's Rufus and he goes, you must be the princess. I'm like, oh my God. So that was my uh, Rufus story. Wow. He, he knows it. He knows about it now. I told him at the very end of the rap party and he was like, that's hilarious. That is ridiculous. I was like, yeah, it is ridiculous. But, you look at you straight yeah. in the eye. You know how yeah how he just like looks straight in his movies. He has like your same oh look. Oh my god! And totally what did you do? Did things. you like look yes. left, right, up, and down? You couldn't like control yourself, or were you like inside just jumping up and down? <laughs> yes, internally screaming, but in joy, but totally kept it cool. And I was like, "Oh hi, nice to meet you." <laughs> Yeah, right. Outside, you're like, hello, how yeah. are you? You lift up your hand. Exactly. Yes, I'm mm-hmm. the princess. So basically, you got on this TV show where you play the princess of Japan, which is like a big deal for you. And then mm-hmm. you got to work with your uh, high school teenage crush that you would dr- put on your binder <laughs> uh, the, and, and a bunch of other people. What else do you want in yes. life? What else do you want in life? Isn't that amazing? Oh, my gosh. There's so many stories. I'm expanding the Akashi short to a feature. So I'm hoping to shoot this in 2020 and possibly in Japan and in North America. It'll hopefully do co-production. So um, that'll be my next goal. There's a bunch of things I want to do. It's never, stories are always there. So So that's the goal, Mm -hmm. 2020. So 2020, what are your goals? How many short films, how many movies, how many TV shows? What's on your list? (laughs) Because it looks like all your dreams are coming true. I would keep that binder. Maybe the things you wrote on that binder came to life. <laughs> I, I would go find it. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's, it's just a math notebook. It's not even. <laughs> it's all good. What if but, it was magic? Um, what if it was like some Japanese magic notebook that when you write things, that is hilarious. it comes true. And look, Rufus tapped you on the shoulder and he said, Hello, well, are you the princess? To, I know. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. In this ne- movie that I'm trying to make, I wrote a role for Keanu Reeves, I hope. We haven't even reached to him or talked to him, so he has no idea. But <laughs> I made best friends because of Keanu Reeves when I lived in Belgium when I was a kid. So that would be pretty dope if we could get Keanu Reeves. Well, you know, he's like the <laughs> biggest, hottest thing right now. The, his John Wick <laughs> stuff. But you never know. You never know because sometimes people just want to do something and it appeals to them. We got a wish to the Comic-Con universe. Let's make a wish. Let's make a wish together, (laughs) Mayumi. Okay, we wish that John Wick, a.k.a. Keanu Reeves, takes the role in Mayumi's next movie. There you go. How about that? (laughs) <laughs> wow, Galaxy, thank you so much. You're I feel very, like it's like I'm already halfway there. You're very welcome. <laughs> hey, if you dream it, it'll happen. Wow. <laughs> thank you. You should have your own shrine, your galaxy shrine. Hey, you know, I <laughs> I'll was visit told every year. that. I was told <laughs> I shouldn't. They could come rub my head, you know, and that's it. You yeah, <laughs> this is a sacred Hey, wow, I feel so honored. <laughs> well, you know, you have a great sense oh. of humor, Mayumi. Mayumi, have you been to a Comic-Con event? Have you been into anything like that before? Actually, no. I really want to one day because uh, a High Castle event, and every time I saw like the updates and videos, I'm like, wow, it's so cool. And uh, some of my friends have gone uh, who's been on TV series uh, that are like in that universe. And um, it's... Uh, it's such an interesting culture. I actually, because I'm from Tokyo, I've never, I never knew that even existed. Um, because it's funny, the like cosplay in Japan is like, it's people just dress like that and they live their <laughs> life like that. So it's not even a special thing. It's like, well, there's a yeah, huge but that's convention just my friend there. on a weekend. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Your you friends know? on a weekend just dress. But you know, there's a huge convention in Japan too. There's a, a few of them. Yeah. I saw a video of how they line up people and I was like, holy, that's impressive. And I can, you know, it's it's classic Japan. They're so organized and they're so good at just coordinating. And I think I have seen the group of people, but then it's hard to tell because, again, like people in Japan just dress like that and gather. So even if it's just like, oh, let's go out for drinks. It's a Saturday. They're wearing so, cosplay. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's honestly, my friends would, after school, take their school uniform off and get into goth cosplay because that's just what they like to wear and we would go karaoke and like, that's just, I never got into that. 
No, mainly because it's so expensive. <laughs> it's a very pricey hobby. Oh, so, yeah. But I was always fascinated that like people would like make everything from scratch. And it's so fascinating. It's hard work. And uh, I have so much respect for all the people who commit to that. Just to watch the cosplay itself, I would totally go to Comic-Con. Well, you know what? If you get on like a CW or fandom TV series or a movie <laughs> like that, you'll have a open ticket to a Comic-Con. Other than that, <laughs> try to make like a superhero movie, something horror related. Here's the thing. You're young still. You have a whole career ahead of you. Oh. I bet you're going to be at a Comic-Con event in the next, you know, so many years and the fans will get to meet you and hang out with you because <laughs> it looks like you're doing big things and it's just the beginning for you right now. Thank you. I really appreciate that. The High Castle fans have been so loyal and so amazing too. So to like even just meeting them in person would be like, it, it would be so fun to just kind of um, hang out with them, answer questions and like being on radios like this and talk about the show. Cause like I have nothing but good things to talk about that show. Like, so yeah, that would be great. And hopefully in, in the future, if I get to direct it. Well, they could reach out or... to you. They could reach out. <laughs> Do you have a social media page? What's your social? What's your Instagram? Let's, let's tell the world your Instagram right now so they could reach out and talk to you about the man in the high castle and just like get to know you, you know, because you never know. You have so many projects. What if they want to know what's going on with you? <laughs> totally. Um, my Instagram and Twitter is the same. It's uh, I M M Y Y O U M E. So it's like I'm my you me. Ooh, that's pretty creative. Look at that. You're so creative. <laughs> I would have never thought of that. I just have no. you know Galaxy. That's <laughs> simple. No, because it's my name. <laughs> Galaxy is cool. You have like coined that. So that's pretty awesome. Yes, it is. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, yeah. my friend who's a dancer in Japan, his name is Imagine. And he's Japanese, like a Japanese guy whose name is Imagine. Like it's very, very, it's not normal at all. But uh, he's a super talented dancer and an actor. And uh, his parents were just fans of Yoko and John. So he named him Imagine. Wow, that's like, pretty neat. You can it, and that's his real I know. Name. It's wow. Pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. See? But I chose like M Y Y O U M E because my name's spelled M A Y U M I. And I have gotten like so many different variations of pronunciation of <laughs> my name that I'm like, <laughs> let me help you. So it's my, you, me, my, you, me. <laughs> well, we're looking at your page and we just followed your page and. There's Japanese oh, writing too, so that looks cool. Um, even though we can't read it, but you know you can, so that's good. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah. we see the Canadian flag there because that's probably where you're living now. Um, mm -hmm. so between Japan and Canada, L look, you can get on a fandom TV show. Canada's known for that. That's like Hollywood North. Come on, get get on a CW oh, yeah. show. Come on, you got to do it. You gotta get on <laughs> Galaxy, if it's that easy. <laughs> I know, I but know. Yes, that would be really fun. Well, I can't wait. You have a cool team, and I think they're working really hard to get you into some cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. But yeah, Vancouver served me very, very well. And I want to give a huge shout out to like my uh, other filmmaker friends and actors who are just killing it. Like, my friend Lawrence the Lamb, Jerome Yu, Natch Dezimeta, Joel McCarthy, just like so many, Phil Planta, amazing, amazing, amazing talents are in Vancouver. So, um, and these are the people who have really helped me, I don't know, like motivate myself as a creator. I honestly think without these people, I probably won't have the resources or like sometimes not even the motivation sometimes because, you know, like life gets in the way, but they push you and they inspire you. And whoever is listening who's feeling like, oh, I don't know if I should do this or not. And like wondering what to do. Like if you have a community that has your back, like, you know, work with them and collaborate because that's how I've sort of moved my career forward.
having allies and friends like that has really helped me. That's so nice of you. And mm-hmm. they probably love you the same. You guys got to stick together. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've seen huge A-listers. They have friends that are just starting out, and then one day they become A-listers. It just takes time. You know what it is? It's yeah. consistency <laughs> and time. I got to cut that part out. But anyways, and just hard work, <laughs> and you're doing it. You're writing, directing, acting. What else can you do? Hey, ladies and gentlemen, what the hell can she do? What else can she do? She's trying. <laughs> Maybe I'll try learning some magic. You know, that'll be Do fun. it. Get on set, start doing magic tricks, take a rabbit out yeah. of your jacket. Yeah. But that's That'd cool. Be funny. So I have a question mm-hmm. for you. Yeah. Living in Japan. Okay. I know you guys are into horror. Has any yeah. freakishly horror happened to you? Oh, I have a good one. Are you ready? So this was when I was in drama camp when I was in high school. We would go out in like the rural area because they would have this building all for like the students. It was like a three story building. And late at night, we started, we, we were talking and then everybody fell asleep. And it was one of those rooms that everybody is kind of sleeping on the floor. We don't really do beds, it's like a futon on the floor. And I was lying down. And it's like, I think like 2 or 3 a.m. I don't remember, but it was late. So lying down, everybody's sleeping. And then it got really cold. So I woke up and I noticed that the window was open and the curtain was slightly open. So I was like, oh, my God. So I went up, sort of just woke up, kind of blurry. And then I got to the window. I was looking far and then I saw this little boy was wearing this white T-shirt and I was like, what? what is so late? What is he doing there? And then I just told him, like, it's late. Go home in Japanese. And then he won't move. Like, that's so weird. And I just closed the window, locked it, closed the, the curtain, and I went back to my, my futon. And then I was still kind of tossing and turning, not being really being able to sleep. And I started thinking, like, wait. And I quickly got up and I went to the window, opened the curtain and unlocked the window, opened it. And he's not there anymore. And I looked down and it's three stories high. So there's no way he could have been on the same level as me. So that instantly got me like, holy shit. So I closed everything and it went back to bed. And the next morning... I wake up and I instantly go to the window and I look outside and it's just this blank tennis court. There's no trees. There's nothing that he could have climbed to sort of look into my window. So that's my scary story. You said it in a (laughs) scary storytelling voice too. I forgot I'm in an interview with you right now for a second. I was just like, okay. And my producer's looking at me. He's like, dude, what the hell? (laughs) I was like sitting there and I was looking at the ceiling. That's pretty creepy. I pictured the boy. I pictured the tennis. Oh, man, man, that's a good story. There you go. (laughs) That's pretty creepy, though. Yeah, that that was actually scary. Yeah, it did. Nobody believed me. And you weren't dreaming. You saw it. uh, Yeah, I totally saw it. I remember waking up and opening the window and closing the curtain. And then I looked down and I was like, you know that feeling when you can't even say, you can't, like, and no sound comes out of your mouth. You know, it's, you're just like, like everything just freeze. Oh yeah. That I, like that was the moment when I realized that I was on the third floor. Dang. I'm like, hell no. <laughs> you're like, hell no. Bye-bye. I'm closing. <laughs> well, yeah, you know what? No, no, this is not happening. Well, people believe stories yeah. like this here in America, and our country is only several hundred years old. Now, imagine Japan and, you know, all these other <laughs> foreign countries that are thousands of years, thousands and thousands of years of heritage yeah. and death. And yeah. The, oh, oh, I'm, oh, yeah. There, there's gonna there's stuff there. I, I'm a big believer of it. I don't care what anybody thinks. Listeners are going to be like, hey, You know, that's pretty creepy or not creepy, but that's pretty scary. Well, thank you for sharing that. That was awesome. We got to get you back on one of our spooky shows so you could do a celebrity scary story and and get you on. I think that would be pretty cool. But you know what? Your whole chat been really amazing. You're widely talented. I can't wait to see you at a Comic-Con. I can't wait for you to, you know, be part of more (laughs) movies and TV shows and just... 
doing everything that you want to do. And your Instagram is at I am M Y Y O U M E Mayumi Yoshida. You've yeah. been very and lovely. Twitter too. Mayumi, yeah. is there anything you want to tell the fans before we head out? Definitely check out The Man in the High Castle it's on Amazon Prime. This cute animation series called Hello Ninja is on Netflix all over the world. I also have the short that I made called Tokyo Lovers that I gorilla shot in Tokyo with a bunch of my friends. Watch out for my Twitter and Instagram. I'll post it there. And thank you so much for listening. Like it's an honor to talk to Galaxy and to reach out with you guys. So um, hopefully we connect outside of this too. That's so nice of you. You are very kind, very humble, very awesome, very talented. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Mayumi Yoshida, and you saw that. She's on Netflix. She's on Man in a High Castle, which is Amazon. She's on every streaming platform. Just find her, check her out, watch her stuff. Go to her social media page. That's I M M Y Y O U M E on Instagram. And this is your boy, Galaxy. And we're signing out from another amazing episode of Comic Con Radio. You ready? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And, Mayumi, we have to blow a billion kisses. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Three, two, one. Mwah. Wow, what were those, like, little (laughs) hamster things? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I was, like, like, blowing, like, little things from my mouth. That's cool. (laughs) Look at that. Wow. So those were a billion lovely kisses, ladies and gems. There you go. You got it. And with that said, peace. Peace. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Galaxy signing out from another amazing episode of Comic-Con Radio. Tune in for your daily shows of Comic-Con Radio. Go to comiccon-radio.com. Reach us on social media, Instagram, at Comic-Con Radio. Comic-Con Radio, taking the world one listener at a time.